Hey there! Today I'd like to show you how I put together now this IKEA table rack mountable version of my original build for a virtualization server which you might have seen that video as well. At that time I have built my server into this large chassis. You know when people say res retrospectively at that time it looked like a good idea. Well, it's the same this time. Then let me explain retrospectively of course what was my original idea. It was that I'm gonna build this large virtualization server with really large fans. It's gonna be a very quiet machine, which actually is, I must say. And I can just do my labs and everyone is happy. Okay, now reality of course strikes. I had all wired up nicely to make finally a video for our Cisco Stackwise port 2. And then, I mean, the thing is that I was just simply not able to hear myself from the fan noise of the four switches which is definitely not a fun thing. Namely, once I was rolling this thing next to me and plugging in some of the interfaces into this thingy here, I realized that these Cisco switches are just as loud as a loud computer. So for me, at least, it became clear that I need to do something about separating the lab portion and the place where I sit in addition to the reduced noise level, also it's really nice to have uh, such a mobile setup because now I can then just cable this thing up. So directly I can cable using short cables the network cards directly to my switches. This of course meant that I had to buy a second computer and then put the original hardware from this large chassis into this one, then I will use then this computer here next to my desk where I'm doing the studies. And this one here gonna sit in the other room where hopefully it doesn't bother me so much and the neighbors not gonna call the cops on me because this thing is just too loud. Since I needed the second more or less functioning computer now which I will use, then I had to hunt down for uh, some used components and I got a little bit lucky because I just went into one of these uh, Turkish shops which is selling, you know, used mobile phones, used computers and such. They are highly typical shops here in German-speaking countries and they just had on stock one of these. Actually, it's an ASRock motherboard, the original one, which I'm going to be moving here in there and practically I'm gonna swap the guts of the two computers. The first thing I did was of course to remove all the components from this chassis of this small second-hand computer. Then next I literally gave this thing a shower. I had to completely wash it. Now as you see this thing is just dirty. Earlier it was filthy. Someone, I think, have uh, spilled coke on it. At least that's what I'm, I'm hoping, that it's not something else. Once this poor chassis have dried after this shower, of course I put it next to the heat radiator, so it dried in about six hours. Anyway, so I drilled two three millimeter holes on the end of the chassis. So this is where you install then here your cards and in the two ends then I drilled these holes and using the mounting brackets which you normally use for Cisco 3750G switches or the 700, 3750 series then I will use to actually kind of IKEA rack mount this uh, chassis so I can easily then screw these things on the two sides. Of course, do the drilling before you build in the motherboard because the small debris of metal gonna totally kill your motherboard. To clean up the chassis from this metal debris, prefer to use such a neodymium magnet. And then this will pick up all these tiny metal pieces. It's gonna stick to them, of course. Probably you might even able to see on the camera that it picked up all these uh, tiny stuff. 
So again, if these things gonna go into the chipset next to the board grid arrays, the chipset gonna short circuit and die. So you, whenever you drill a case, keep this in mind. And yeah, now it's then time to put in the old components of the earlier virtualization host build. I'm gonna be building in into this small chassis more or less the same components like I had in the previous build. So it's the same Gigabyte UD5 motherboard with an AMD FX8350 8-core CPU which should run quite a lot of uh, virtual machines. Then I'm gonna build in three of these HP NC 364T cards which are quad gigabit. Something what I needed to change was that I have to use now a somewhat smaller CPU cooler because the old one just doesn't fit in the small chassis. So this is a 12 cm Alpenfön Brocken. It's a quite good cooler actually, it should be quite good. I can tell you that putting all the components into this small chassis, for me at least, was like a brain surgery because I barely had space for my hands to work, as an example here around the CPU due to the large heatsink and so forth. The heatsink is only about 3 mm lower than the side of the chassis itself, so I need to be careful when I'm sliding it on the top. You might notice that the cooler is actually just uh, mounted here in this direction and that's because I want this cooler to also suck a bit of air away from the cards which gonna get really hot and then this thing gonna go to the power supply and then the power supply here gonna push the whole heat out of the chassis. Here is then the chassis with these rack mount ears screwed on the two sides on the back side, so this will be facing towards the switches. These three server grade network cards got so hot that I simply could not touch them after they were running for a half an hour, either not even doing anything. So I have installed this 12 cm fan right on top of them. What I tried here, I never did this before. So here you see, I just realized that actually the distance between these PCI cards, what you normally screw the screws on, is that exactly 12 centimeters between about five of them. So it's a good thing because using these Intel cooler screws, I was able to nicely fasten this cooler inside the chassis. So even if I buy an InfiniBand card, this thing here gonna keep the InfiniBand card cool as well. These for the time being are only quad gigabit cards, so they on only use about up to 12 watt of power, which is not so bad. However, in the future, I'm gonna definitely buy at least one InfiniBand card, and InfiniBand cards are running hot. Yeah, I definitely have to put in more air into the cards. To make the whole thing a little bit, you know, colorful and happy for me when I work on it, I also printed out this sheet of paper. It's more or less like the birth certificate and the destiny of this poor server here, because it's gonna be running Linux KVM as the uh, hypervisor, then mostly GNS3 as well. And I'm working with Debian, in spite that everyone is crazy nowadays about Ubuntu. I really have issues with Ubuntu, so I'm gonna stick with Debian as long as I can. So now then I can just slide this thing into my IKEA rack made or converted into a rack table, this white thingy here with the metal handles. And once I push it in, ta -da! Hallelujah! Now I got a rack mountable server. This is by far not the final incarnation of this rack because these three switches here, these are 3750G series gigabit switches, they use about 200 watt of power. The power is not that much of an issue, the noise is the issue, and this means that I need to get rid of these three. Beside the noise, the other issue what I got with these 3750Gs is that they are stuck at iOS 12, 
so I cannot run iOS version 15 on them which is definitely a bummer. Furthermore you might be able to notice that these units are actually one and a half U whereas the newer switches are only a single U and this means that I will be able to then gain one and a half U with the one and a half U extra space then I will be able to move this server a little bit lower of course and that means that I can screw it in into this wood of the IKEA table so it's really rock solid. Once the replacement switches arrive then I can do the actual cable management for especially for the power cables because for the time being my APC power distribution unit is just sitting here on top of the server which I'm not sure whether it's a good idea since this is the air hole for the cards so I'm gonna most probably have to move this thingy here on the side of the table. Many thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from my endeavor to trying to build on the cheap let me know what you think about this build and yeah just put your comments in the description below what you would have totally done differently.